Welcome to this edition of Flipped Science. Today we are talking about genetic disorders. Now these are disorders or diseases that are very different than some of the ones we talked about recently with regards to ones caused by bacteria or caused by viruses. So these are not diseases that you catch uh, or you get from another living organism that affects you. These are disorders that happen because of a chromosome or DNA that you inherit uh, or they are caused by mutations in your DNA as your cells are reproducing. There are three main types of genetic disorders. They include Mendelian or single gene disorders, chromosome abnormalities, and multifactorial disorders. So I'm going to go over each of these in a, a little bit more depth, uh, although I'm trying to keep it short. If there's anything else you'd like to know about these, please let me know. The first type of genetic disorders that I would like to talk about are the Mendelian disorders or single gene disorders. If you remember Gregor Mendel and his studies, we set up Punnett squares to figure out whether certain characteristics would be passed down from parents to the offspring. So in other words, we may have had a big B codes for black fur and a little B codes for white fur in rabbits and then we found out when you cross them what were the probability that the offspring would have a certain colored fur. Well, disorders in this category, uh, you can determine in much the same way. So in other words, there are certain alleles that code for a disease. And if the offspring is to inherit, you know, a dom if it's a dominant allele, if they were to inherit one of these, or if it's a recessive allele, if they were to inherit two of these, they may end up with the disorder. Some examples of Mendelian disorders include Huntington's disease, phenylketonuria or PKU, sickle cell anemia, Tay-Sachs, and cystic fibrosis, which I'll cover a little bit more. The disorders I just discussed represent just a few of the Mendelian genetic disorders that exist. One of the most common of those is cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a disorder that many people have. In fact, it's one of the most common fatal genetic diseases in children. People with cystic fibrosis live to an average life expectancy of approximately 28 years old. Uh, this has risen a, a quite a bit in, in past years as we find better ways to treat people that have the disorder. But it is a chronic disorder, something that you cannot get rid of. There are only ways to manage it. Cystic fibrosis most commonly affects the respiratory system and the gastrointestinal system. One of the main issues with it is that it causes an over secretion of fluids in the lungs and the bronchioles. So people with this oftentimes suffer from bronchitis, pneumonia, due to this extra secretion of fluids in the lungs. So treatments of this include drainage of fluids from the lungs, it includes breathing exercises and that type of stuff. Now this disorder can be represented in a Punnett square much the way Gregor Mendel's problems were because this is a recessive gene disorder. In other words, there is a, and in this picture you can see right here of this Punnett square, you can see that the capital C represents the dominant allele which means that someone would not have cystic fibrosis. The lowercase c represents the recessive allele, which means that you would have cystic fibrosis. In a disorder like this, if someone were to have big C, big C, they would not have the disorder. If they had big C, little c, they would not have the disorder because the big C, which is dominant, represents a, the healthy allele. If someone were to have little c, little c, they would have cystic fibrosis, meaning that they inherited both recessive alleles for cystic fibrosis. Now there is a difference between someone who has big C, big C and has big C, little c. Both of them do not have cystic fibrosis. However, we, ca we call people who have a big C and a little c who have one dominant allele and one recessive allele, they are considered carriers, meaning that they are different than someone who is not a carrier because they can pass on that recessive allele, the little c, to their offspring. So if you have two parents that do not have cystic fibrosis, but both of them are carriers, they can both give that recessive allele to their offspring, and their offspring has, therefore, a 25% chance of having this genetic disorder.
One other thing that should be mentioned with the Mendelian disorders is the fact that some of them are autosomal dominant, whereas some of them are autosomal recessive. In the example we just talked about with cystic fibrosis, that is an example of one that's autosomal recessive meaning that the allele that codes for it is recessive. This is a good thing because, therefore, if you have one of the good, healthy alleles, then you will not have the disorder. Uh, in, in other words, in order to have cystic fibrosis, you need to have both recessive alleles. In autosomal dominant disorders, it is one where you have to, you'll see that show up in previous generations where they actually have a dominant allele that causes for disorders. And if nobody before that has it, the only other reason it could be is due to a mutation in which now you are the first generation in your family to have that disorder. Now, you'd think that if one, that one question might come up that if one of them is autosomal dominant, wouldn't it just be like almost everybody would have it? Well, the answer is a lot of people that have some of these, and especially the, the more severe ones, never have an opportunity to reproduce, so they do not pass this gene on. And the other thing is that even though the allele may be dominant, they are very, very rare within the population. So in other words, there are not many of them that exist. Another type of genetic disorder that can occur is chromosome abnormalities. Now this is not a scenario in which you inherited a allele or gene from a parent that coded for a genetic disorder. This is a situation in which something happened in the process of DNA replication or in the process of meiosis in which a chromosome was affected. So there are a number of different things that can happen. In other words, we are supposed to receive one copy of each chromosome from our mom and one from our dad. So we should have two copies of chromosome 1, chromosome 2, chromosome 3, and so on. The, the, when I said that different things could happen, if you think of it, something could happen to one of the chromosomes where it doesn't fully develop or part breaks off. You could have a situation where a chromosome uh, fails to be there, so in other words, one is missing, or you could have a situation where there is an extra one that is formed. In the case of one missing, this usually will lead to an inability to, to live. So in other words, if our, all of our genetic information is there, we will not be able to live. Scientists believe that over 60% of spontaneous miscarriages under 90 days occur because of a genetic abnormality like this, where the cell really just doesn't have the ability to properly multiply and start to form the different organs, tissues that we need to have. Therefore, it's not able to sustain life. So in the other, another situation is where you have extra chromosomes. And in this situation, this is disorders where you receive, say, three copies of a chromosome. This can happen with chromosome 13, trisomy 13 it is called, uh, which you re when the process is happening, you accidentally or, you know, for some something that goes wrong during this process, you receive three copies of the 13th chromosome. This causes trisomy 13. Another example would be if you receive three copies of the 18th chromosome, which is somewhat common. And that is another disorder that's terrible. It's called Edwards syndrome. And, and I'll mention that briefly in a little while. The other situation is where there is damage to one of the chromosomes. So in other words, something happens where, you know, part of it breaks off or part of it is missing, or there is like a translocation where part of the chromosome is replaced and put to another place. So before I mention that some disorders can be because you are missing a chromosome, and like I said, oftentimes this is fatal, it, you cannot survive. However, there's some examples such as Turner syndrome, where if you are missing one of these sex chromosomes, you are still able to live, although you will have some uh, problems. Another one, and before I had mentioned when there is the an extra chromosome, and I mentioned trisomy 13, trisomy 18. Another one, and probably the most common one that that we think of, is trisomy 21. When you receive three copies of the 21st chromosome, this results in Down syndrome. So. In Down syndrome, there are many familiar characteristics that we see with Down syndrome. These characteristics include almond-shaped eyes, a flattened face, enlarged tongue, usually lower cognitive abilities, and also some developmental problems with the heart, which can lead to some more severe heart issues. The picture here is a picture of Chris Burke, who is an actor 
He was in a show in the early 90s titled Life Goes On, in which he played a character named Corky. Uh, but I think it shows the, you know, the, the, character, the characteristic look of someone with Down syndrome. A lot of people will say that they are unfamiliar with what Down syndrome is. However, when they see a picture or see someone with Down syndrome, they recognize it and say, oh yeah, I've seen people that have this disorder. Another of these types of disorders is trisomy 18, which is Edwards syndrome. This one is much more severe in that people that have Edwards syndrome, 50% of them do not live past two months and 90% of them do not live past one year of age. So this is a scenario in which having one additional chromosome, chromosome 18, results in problems that are so severe that they have, cannot live anywhere near a normal life and in fact 90% of them cannot survive to the age of one. The final class of genetic disorders is the multifactorial disorders and these are disorders that require the interaction of at least two different inherited genes as well as environmental factors. So this can be uh, neural tube disorders, uh, certain types of diabetes, a cleft lip, cleft palate, those type of disorders. And I'm not going to spend much time talking about them, but they can be fairly common, but they result from the interaction of at least two different inherited genes as well as environmental factors. The impact of genetics on our health is a topic that we could spend a ton of time on and I promise to keep these short and I'm going to wrap this one up, but there are other things to look into in the future and that would be the impact of the genetic predispositions. So in other words, are some people more genetically predisposed to develop cancer than others? In other words, person A is a smoker, person B is a smoker, but maybe person A is more genetically predisposed to get lung cancer because of their genes and because of their genetic makeup. Another thing would be the fact that uh, how having offspring with a genetic disorder, such as a chromosomal abnormality, can be a function of certain factors such as the age of the parents. So in other words, if a mother uh, has a child when she is 20, the chances of that child having a genetic abnormality such as Down syndrome is much, 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 much less likely to happen than if it's a mother that has an offspring, uh, a mother that has a child when they are, say, 40 to 45 years old. Uh, it becomes much more likely for them to have a child with uh, offspring that have a genetic abnormality. So these are topics, I mean, there's a, you could spend a, a, a month, honestly, talking about all these topics, um, but this would be the longest flip classroom of all times if we did that.